Welcome to my cafe, my pet info cafe. Pour yourself a warm cup of your favorite and let's chat about our love of animals. I am your host, Jennifer Eileen, and I am so delighted to present our topic today, black cats, pets, not props. In the Halloween season, black cats are prominent in decorations, often in a menacing pose or on a witch's broom. Walk into any store starting in August and you'll see black cat props on display as decorations. However, our guests and your host know that black cats are wonderful pets, not props. Let's hear from our guest today, Tom Beauvais, Executive Director of Loudoun Community Cat Coalition, and Talia Chapasky, Community Relations Director from Loudoun County Animal Services, and also, please welcome our very special pet guest, our kitten, Dolly. Welcome. Thanks. Hi. And hello, Dolly. <laughs> this is Dolly Parton. So you said that if I went into the shelter and sang, you know, Absolutely. So this is Dolly Parton, um, and I personally believe that if you show up in full costume ready to sing a Dolly Parton song, her adoption fee will be waived. <laughs> wow. I, I think we could go for that. Tom, tell us about Dolly. Dolly's one of four kittens that we rescued. We actually had the mom. She was born to a feral mother um, and uh, under a shed. And so we got the mom in while she was still pregnant. She gave birth to the kittens. And so we've got four country singer kittens was the theme. <laughs> Dolly, Dolly Parton, who's right here, she's the black one. Yes. There were mixed colors, so uh, the others are Hank Williams, uh, Loretta Lynn, and Willie Nelson. But Dolly's the black cat, so we figured we'd bring her today because it's fitting with the theme of the show. But she's <laughs> oh. a great, friendly little cat. They're all up for adoption. Great. And, uh, We've got an applica applications coming in on them all right now. So okay, that's wonderful. Yeah. And just for our viewers, it's August, so <laughs> you know she may or may not be, but somebody just as beautiful can be. How, what is her age right now? She is uh, four months oh. between, three, between three and four months. She just yeah. got spayed about two weeks ago. Oh wow! So they're okay. all ready to go. Okay, that's really super. And um, I met another cat, and she's actually the stand-in for Sammy. Could you tell us about Sammy? He has such a special story. Sure. Sammy is, was from a very large colony in a, in a very busy downtown area. Yeah. They live right on the main street. He was living in the sewers to try to stay out of traffic, which is pretty common for, mm -hmm. for cats who are living outdoors, community cats who are living on their own. Yeah. He was very, uh, he was very skinny. He had a lot of fleas on him. Uh -huh. So he was about, he's about nine months old. He was four and a half pounds when we got him. And he was brought in as part of our trap due to return efforts where we were, um, but he's so friendly, he was socialized, I mean, completely social. We didn't have to work with him at all. And because it wasn't a really good environment to return him to, we decided that he would go into our rescue program for adoption. So he's, uh, I was gonna bring him today, but he's very, very active as, yeah. at nine months. He's not quite as easy to handle as <laughs> this little one. Um, he's super social, super friendly, but it, uh, he, I couldn't get a harness on him and I didn't want to have the chance of him <laughs> running loose in the studio. <laughs> But he's a great cat, um, and we find that quite often with, with some yeah. of these colonies. Um, uh, this one in particular also didn't have a caregiver. There were several people who feed along the street, just put food out. So in, in those cases where we find sociable cats, we will bring them in for rescue. So he's one of those. That's and he'll be available for adoption in the next uh, two to three weeks. Well, when I met him, he was immediately friendly with me. And to your point about his life outdoors, when I met him, his, his, the, the fur around his neck was still short. And you said it was because he was so flea bitten that he was scratching himself constantly. Yeah, he was almost bald around the neck, yeah. just the ring around his neck. And as it grew in, it's actually got kind of a salt and pepper look to it. So oh, he's, interesting. he's a jet black cat. Um, very difficult to get good pictures of him because he <laughs> looks like I a got shadow. One. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a little white spot in his chest, but now oh. it's his, uh, his, he looks so much better even than when you saw him a couple of weeks yeah. ago. He's just really filling out well. But that, that fur condition was just an, an uh, you know, indication about how difficult life outdoors is for cats and why we need to adopt them all, it is, rescue really them is, all. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, to that point, um, I'd like to segue a bit and talk about adoption of cat, black cats, and then we want to talk about our first myth because that's really the purpose of one of the fun things about this show. But I'd really like you to tell uh, everyone in this community about adopting black cats. You know, traditionally they they're, they were thought to be a little slower. There's also been the the word out that you don't want to um, adopt, uh, let a black cat 
uh, be adopted during the Halloween season. Could you say the trends that you're seeing, because the trends you're seeing are positive, and I'd love to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're both um, seeing trends, and of course I'll let Tom speak to his organization, um, but we pulled the data for the shelter in Loudoun and found on average our cats are with mm -hmm. us about 9.2 days before adoption. Wow. Uh, with our black cats, it is slightly longer at around 11. Okay. Uh, but we actually chalk a lot of that up to what Tom mentioned earlier, which is getting a photo of a black mm -hmm. cat is incredibly difficult. Um, a lot of times <laughs> it's like a little blob on the screen. <laughs> um, and then also when our adopters come in, frequently if we point them towards a black cat, they already have a black cat. They're potentially looking for something a little different for their home. Um, hmm. So that's kind of an interesting thing we've noticed. But the data doesn't really support this, you know, exorbitantly long wait period for black cats, um, which is okay. quite interesting. And I think yeah. that speaks to our community. Yeah. Um, we have a really incredible community that loves animals um, and wants to support black cats because there is sort of this, you know, I'm worried they're going to wait here longer, so I want to give this one a home, which is amazing and is what helps them get them into homes. So. That's, that's a great story. Tom, you also shared about the people who specifically are looking. And, and weren't there three kittens that were practically on a lottery? You had to adopt them because they were so cute and everybody yeah. wanted them. Tell yeah, me about that. Yeah, we called them. They were certified cute. They were okay. jet black. They actually had the, the nickname was the Cole Brothers because they were so jet black. They didn't have a speck of white on them. And when they all laid together in the bed, it would look like one big cat, but it was three little kittens. <laughs> and uh, they were, again, they were born to a, a mother who was born out. They were all born outdoors, and they were rescued by a family up in uh, Shepherdstown, West Virginia, the wow. um, year before last. But they, we, we kind of had the same experience that, that Talia mentioned that you have at the shelter. We have people, I don't want to refute that uh, other rescues and other areas and different communities might have, you know, different experiences with, mm -hmm. Um, getting black cats adopted. There's a general, I won't even call it a myth, but there's a, there's a, um, it's colloquial, colloquial that, that it takes longer for them to get adopted. We have people who call us and ask specifically if we have black cats because they don't want them to be stuck in the foster system for long periods of time. Yeah. And we find that the more significantly than color, the age of the cat makes the big difference. Mm. So if we have black kittens, they get adopted very quickly. If we have adult black cats, it takes a little longer. And that's consistent with pretty much any color cat. The older they are, the longer it takes for, for us, at least, to get them adopted. Mm -hmm. But the community is fantastic. We have a very compassionate community. They support rescues. They support the animal shelter. And we get people who specifically ask for the, the cases, that the cats that they think might be tougher to get adopted. Mm -hmm. So we have really quick turnover with black black kittens, it's really, we don't notice a big difference. That is such good news, and I'm so glad to talk about happy news. Well, I'm going to talk about our first myth, and then we'll come back. But the first myth that we want to talk about is in the history of the bad luck. An official church document called Vox in Rama was issued by Pope Gregory IX on June 13, 1223. In it, black cats were declared an incarnation of Satan. In modern times, we watch the movie Bell, Book, and Candle in which a black cat does the witch's bidding to cast a spell. Question, is it bad luck if a black cat walks across a person's path? Are black cats a devil or a witch's errand boy? <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I have had no luck getting a cat do something for me. They <laughs> definitely don't take orders. Uh -huh. So um, I would definitely say that's a myth uh, in my experience. Um, I feel like I'm the errand boy for, for my cats, for sure. So. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I agree. Yeah, I've had several black cats cross my path, my lap, my chest, all over. And I, I haven't noticed any bad luck from any of them. <laughs> I can see where the myth kind of came from. When you, when we, as we mentioned, they're hard to get good pictures of them. They do look like little shape-shifting shadows, especially <laughs> if you don't have good lighting. So I, I can see where it came from, but I say myth. Okay. <laughs> well, to that point, let's talk about the, the shelter statistics again, which was it, it has been long been a, an urban legend, if not myth, that, you sh that shelters would not adopt a black cat during Halloween because of the risk to them. Yeah. Can you say more about that? Absolutely, and I think um, that kind of speaks to animal welfare as a whole. We've gotten yeah. a lot more data driven, and the data just simply doesn't support that. Um, now, in general, for Halloween, around Halloween, it's a good idea to keep pets, you know, indoors, keep an extra eye on them. You've got excited kids, you've got masks, you've got candy <laughs> everywhere, you know, everyone's <laughs> running around having a good time. Mm -hmm. So overall, for safety for your pets, you know, keeping them on a leash, keeping them inside, watching out for chocolate, always a good idea. Mm -hmm. But the data doesn't really show that adopting out cats or black cats around Halloween is more dangerous for them 
Um, for us as a shelter, we are um, we have sworn law enforcement officers in our building. Yeah. We ask for a photo ID. Our animals are also all microchipped. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of layers in place where someone potentially wanting a cat for some sort of nefarious purpose um, probably would not be coming to get one from the shelter to adopt one, to go through that whole process um, for that cat. And as a community, we're really not seeing that, um, which, is, which is wonderful to have the data to be able to confidently make those decisions for sure. All right, well, thank you for yeah. that. Tom, anything to add to that in your experience? Uh, we are very careful about any cats that we adopt any time of the year, and we have a really thorough vetting process where we, we check references. We, we ask for them, we actually check them. We talk to people's vets, we talk to their neighbors. And so if, um, we haven't noticed any issues with adopting cats out in October, but we're just as vigilant then as we are throughout the rest of the year. All right, good, good to know, good to know. Well, I'm gonna go to our next myth. The myth number two is that cats are gods and goddesses. For <laughs> thousands of years, the cat held a position of divinity in Egypt. Two of the goddesses in the Egyptian pantheon were Bast and Sekhmet worshiped for as long as 3,000 years BC. Family cats wore jewelry, fancy collars, pierced ears. If a cat died, the entire family went into mourning. Greek historian Diordius Sicilis wrote, whoever kills a cat in Egypt is condemned to death. Whether he committed this crime deliberately or not, the people gather and kill him. Question, should we worship black cats? <laughs> This is too fun. <laughs> so I think uh, when you look at me with this cat, I, well, I won't call it worshiping, but they certainly have a certain power over me. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think you're worshiping that cat right now, and she knows it. <laughs> Absolutely. I do think they have a certain power over us. You know, they're such wonderful animals, and they're so engaging. Um, you can't help but kind of be drawn in. And as you mentioned earlier, you know, they become part of the family. Um, you know, the whole family mourns, the whole family's concerned, you know. Yeah. I know if one of my cats doesn't eat dinner, it's the topic of conversation for the rest of the <laughs> night. You know, did they not like the food? Was it, you know, served wrong? Um, so I, I do think they just have this incredible endearing quality that you can't help but fall in love with them. Yeah. So. And I do think cats have attitude, or catitude. They do. <laughs> I think they know that they're all descended from Boston Sekhmet, and you know, that's how <laughs> it should be. So we'll move on to our next myth. So I read that after World War II, that was the time that Americans started doing trick or treat. And at that time, black cats were considered a good luck charm. A black cat at your door would scare away evil critter, critters that might come a calling. And this host, dressed up as a black cat for Halloween when I was a teenager. My mother's birthday is October 31st, so I was on my own as a teenager to come up with a costume as my parents went out for di to dinner. Question, are black cats good luck? I mean, I certainly think so. I think all cats are good luck, though, so I'm definitely a little biased. But I know, um, Tom, we've been talking earlier about how some countries and some cultures do consider them good luck. Yeah, the UK and Japan, they're, they're considered, if, if a cat crosses your path, it's good luck. In Latvia, I've heard that it means you're gonna have a good harvest mm -hmm. that year. Um, other countries are completely the opposite. In Germany, if a cat crosses your path from right to left, it's bad luck. So it's uh, <laughs> you know totally up in the air, I guess it's what you believe, but I think as, as Talia said, anytime you make a bond with a black cat or any cat, it's, it's gonna bring you joy. That's good luck to me. <laughs> Well, I love that. Yeah, I, I believe that they are good luck, too. Um, so there's another myth that are there more black cat, there are more black cats than any other color because the black gene is more dominant for felines. They also have golden eyes. Is that uh, true or false? I believe it's true. I did some uh, mm. research before the show, and I've read uh, a you know, study that's been put out by the NIH actually, and that there are really only two, two genetic bases for cats, black and red, and everything else is a variation of them. Okay. And in addition, they've determined that black cats, because of the ge their genetic um, build, have higher resistance to certain types of diseases, and they're actually studying that uh, as part of an Alzheimer's okay. study, because there's, oh. some, there's some sharing of uh, 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 physical effects on cats okay. and, that humans also share. So I found that very interesting, but yeah, so I believe that there are uh, a lot of the genetic buildup of most cats is either black or red, so they're in there. All right, <laughs> absolutely. And um, you know, not only is it a dominant gene, you also 
the statistics show that mm -hmm. you see them being adopted in larger quantities. Um, for us, it's, they're on par with a couple other different colors of cats, but I do think a big portion of that is just because of how the numbers of our shelter are. But if you look at the big groups and the big rescues, you do see black cats getting adopted mm -hmm. in higher numbers because they're coming in in higher numbers. Okay. So, so. Well, I've got another myth for you, and I'm not sure. This is kind of a new one for me, and that had to do with its sailors said that, uh, thought, thought that cats were good luck, black cats in particular were good luck. So true or false, any experience with that? I mean, I would definitely say true, right? They would be great rodent control on a boat. Yes. Um, especially, you know, you don't want them getting in your supply of grain mm -hmm. for the journey ahead. Um, also, just the companionship, I'd have to imagine, you know, it'd be nice to have. We're all, you know, we're all here and we're all just kind of looking at this cat. We're all happy that there's a kitty cat here. <laughs> I imagine it would be the same way if you're stuck on a boat for you know days and weeks on end just having a, a friendly cat to hang out with and enjoy. Yeah and on a boat where the quarters are cramped the cat kind of stays in the shadows and the black cat blends in so you know you don't feel crowded you might not even not notice that it's there but if it's doing its job it's bringing you good luck. Yeah <laughs> well I think that's true and then you know we did we've uh, talked to a uh, 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 guardian of Norwegian forest cats and these long hair cats have, have proliferated all around the world because the Vikings had them on their boats, right? <laughs> and then they went on. Now, I found a great anecdote um, that Winston Churchill had a, a cat. It was actually a black and white cat and it was quite the thing because I think when he launched one of the ships, uh, the, the cat went with the ship or he showed it off at that time. <laughs> so that, that's, a, that's another anecdote along those lines. Um, and uh, so let's talk more about the shelter statistics and more about, you know, just trends. What, what should somebody think about when they're adopting a cat, black or any other color? Um, for me, I always say personality. Figure out what you're looking for um, and figure out, you know, what does your evening look like? What do your weekends look like? Are you active? Are you, you know, hanging out on the couch? Are you a big movie buff? And then find an animal that sort of matches that personality, right? <laughs> if you've got a super active cat that wants to play and play with lawn toys and climb up and down cat trees, <coughs> but you'd rather, you know, take a nap on the couch, maybe that's not the right fit for you. Or maybe it is if you're trying to get more active, okay. right? But really looking at that whole picture of how that animal is going to fit into your family mm -hmm. and what kind of family member they're going to be, I think that's incredibly important. It's really nice. I think your wardrobe matters too. Because <laughs> I was just, I just spent a uh, half an hour with white Norwegian forest cats and I was wearing dark clothes and I looked like a rug when I was done. <laughs> hey, it's an excuse to go shopping. <laughs> it is, absolutely. Um, and so another, uh, there's some other facts and, and uh, some interesting conversation. I've read that there are 22 different breeds of black cats and we also know that the Bombay cat is one cat that breed that is absolutely black, like the pads and everything. That's Any observation cool. on that? I've seen black cats uh, yeah, out in, you know, out in feral colonies where they're long-haired, short-haired, yeah. and so many of the short-haired ones have this beautiful little star in their chest. Mm. Absolutely, and that's something I love about working at the shelter is we see so many different cats, so many different colors. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just incredible, the variations they can come in. Um, and it's always interesting. It's like, how did we end up with this color combo or this coat? You know, it's, it's really cool to see. Um, we don't DNA test, and a lot of times we mm -hmm. don't know where our cats came from, so it's always just the best guess. But it is really amazing the variety you can get. Yeah. Yeah, and based on the uh, what I mentioned earlier with the NIH study that, that there's really two genetic bases to most cats, I have no doubt there are 22 breeds of black cats. It, it just makes perfect sense. And like the little dollies, because she's got a black nose, black paw pads, and oh, she has black <laughs> paw pads. Yeah, can we see? Little, little Does she show us? <gasps> little black paw pads oh, and a black nose, you, black girl. lips. She's just one little spot of white on her chest, oh, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> Why do they all have that little spot of white? It's so sweet. So you can I see just them. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, I, I, uh, I'm a big, big fan of T.S. Eliot, his old Mr. Possum books, and of course, the, that were generated by Andrew Lloyd Webber as the, the musical Cats. And in his, and he, he had a great poem about a black cat. The greatest magicians have something to learn from Mr. Mistopheles' conjuring turn. He is quiet and small, he is black. From his ears to the tip of his tail, he can creep through the tiniest crack. He can walk on the narrowest rail. He can pick any card from a pack. He is equally cunning with dice. He is always deceiving you into believing that he's only hunting for mice. 
<laughs> and that is so much like the, the, the black cats that I know. In yeah. fact, my little tuxedo boy, who's a master at hiding, is the one that I, <laughs> I call Mr. Mistopheles. This is his theme song. Oh, well, yeah. That's awesome. They do get into everything. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how much personality they can have in such a small little cat. <laughs> so, Tom, the, 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 so many of the cats that I've seen that you've rescued with uh, the Cat Coalition, and you just took in 40 cats, I understand. Yes, we did, yeah. How many of them were black? Oh, you know, I would need to go count, but there is a solid handful okay. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, for sure. So, um, the, uh, the, the long hair, short hair, um, the Norwegian forest cats, there's a black breed. Can you say more about that? Uh, Given that we do deal with community cats at the mm -hmm. coalition, we don't see that many um, specific breeds like Norwegian forest cats. We love them. We do get some long-haired cats who are born and living outdoors. Yeah. Um, they have a tougher time because they're generally living in the woods. They get burrs and things in their coat. Oh. So we, uh, once they get, once we, once we work with the caregivers on how to take care of them properly and watch for them, and you can actually groom some, or we will go get them and bring them in to get the grooming done. It helps a lot, but we most of the cats that we find are actually short hair, medium hair cats that are living outdoors that we're able to trap or that people yes. report to us. And we get a, t a complete mixture of colors because they're breeding with, you know, there's, mm -hmm. you don't know who they're breeding with, but it's interesting that the way cats are, they have a, they're, they can actually have multiple fathers within one litter. So sometimes yes. we'll get black mm -hmm. cats mixed with tabbies, mixed with orange, mixed with calicos. In, in the same litter, and it's just yeah. amazing to see the variety that you get. But we do get quite a few black cats. Um, I'd say probably 20% of the cats that we get have some black, or some variation of a black cat. Okay. We do have a long-haired black cat at the shelter right now. I'm not sure if he's maybe part Norwegian forest cat. He's certainly oh. very majestic looking, um, oh. but absolutely just like the most longest, glorious, mane of, of hair on him oh, that's gorgeous. Um, and he's, he's a beautiful boy so that's good. Um, if you're interested in adopting um, come on by <laughs> of but, course yeah it, it's hard to know what he is he was a, a stray who had been found in the community um, oh but uh, he's he's quite quite good looking so right. <laughs> well uh, Talia since we have you here just to say a little bit more about the shelter and yeah. the adoption process for the shelter I know Tom and the, the rescue has a kitten adoption program obviously with Molly can, yeah. we, can you tell us just in a minute so about your absolutely um, so Loudoun County Animal Services we're an open admission shelter so okay. we take in all sorts of animals okay um, cats of course but okay. dogs pigeons guinea pigs rabbits <laughs> um, horses goats we see it all and uh, we are open every day of the week Monday through Sunday we have an actual physical building so you can come and meet the animals yeah um, and we're very fortunate to have that and um, we're really lucky that the community supports us and allows us to, to have that place mm -hmm. um, so you can come on by check them out we're open every day from 11 to 6 <laughs> uh, you don't need an appointment to walk through and view the animals and you can find our adoption process on our website you can also view the application um, a lot of our animals are ready to go home, if not that same day, very shortly after. Wow. Yeah, we're very lucky. We have a vet on site, um, so all okay. of our animals, you know, get spay neutered, get the medical care they need, so they can be healthy and head on to their new homes. Yeah, absolutely. So when just as when you adopt uh, from the Cat Coalition, when you adopt from the the shelter, the cat has been spayed or neutered, all the shots, yep. everything is taken care Microchipped. of. Microchipped. Um, if it is a barn cat or a working cat, mm -hmm. we will ear tip them as well, which is another sign that that cat has been vaccinated and is altered and is being cared for as a caregiver. Um, so absolutely, you know, anything we can do to make sure that cat is getting off on the right paw as they <laughs> head to their new home and they're they're set up for success. Yeah, that's a very good story. Now, um, Tom, when you're when the coalition rescues cats, um, you I know you you guys. Your, you and the shelter collaborate. Can you say more about that? Yeah, we work very closely with the animal shelter. I'm actually on a citizen volunteer committee, the Loudoun, um, Loudoun County Animal Advisory Committee, where we work with the Board of Supervisors and the animal shelter. We go over the statistics every month. We uh, collaborate with them on policies, and we work with them very closely as a rescue as well. Yeah. We've actually, we had we don't have this, this the largest foster network, as large as the shelter does, so we've transferred three litters of kittens to the shelter this year that we rescued oh, that we couldn't put into foster. Okay, right. So when they have the capacity, they're very good about working with, mm -hmm. with, the, with the community and also with rescues. Yeah. And, um, well, I'm just wondering about Molly. Would she like to check out these pumpkins, <laughs> do you think? Well, let's see how she it's does. Fine. She was let's napping see if she, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. she was napping she was a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Oh, there you go. There you go. That might be interesting. Checking out the camera. 
Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of course, the camera is very interesting. What do you think of that, darling? <laughs> well, it's just so beautiful having um, a black cat in the family, or black cats in the family, a black cat in the house. So some of the uh, lore that I've read that is so clever is that if you have a black cat, you don't have to worry about it showing on your clothes, <laughs> right, or your furniture. Absolutely, a, an all black wardrobe is very stylish, right? Uh, and so yes, <laughs> another you're, reason you're to get one. always elegant, very, very stylish. And um, <laughs> there's very much other advantages to having black cats. I think they're so elegant. Now I have several pictures that I have taken of my black cats. I play with my iPhone in the setting and I, I get them to sit in the sun, when they're sitting in the sunlight. And you know, of course I have thousands of pictures and I catch one yes. <laughs> where they're actually sitting in the sunlight. And I find that many black cats have kind of actually an undercoat of brown or some other color. So back to the point that I understand that Bombay is the one breed that was truly bred to be all black. Yeah, I would I would believe that, you know, because sometimes you have, <laughs> where are you going, silly? Um, sometimes you have a cat that looks one color, but if you brush your hand on their fur in the other yeah. direction, you see this undertone that's mm -hmm. completely different. So any final thoughts for you about black cats before we close out? I think they're fantastic animals. They, they do have that mystique about them. They do have the look, I mean, they carry it well, and they, they live up to uh, some of those myths, the friendly ones, but <laughs> you know, in terms of bad luck and the other things, that's just, uh, you know, I just don't buy it. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. That is, that is just an excellent thought to close on. Thank you both. Thank you for, Thanks having, for having us. us. Thank you to Loudoun Community Cat Coalition and Loudoun County Animal Services. For more information, you may visit PetInfoCafe.com. Mm -hmm.